Hi friends, hope you are doing well. I am Dr. Ganguly. Welcome to my channel. Today we are going to talk about research philosophy and this is an important subject in the realm of research methods and essentially there are three different concepts in research philosophy which we are going to discuss. Now many of us actually do a lot of research even finish our PhD degrees without knowing about these research philosophies. But it's a good idea to know about some of these things because what happens then is that you know where you are coming from, why some of the things you are doing are the way they are and so on. And sometimes it can help to improve your research because you may actually not know of certain methods which are out there to do your research. So most people are stuck in one of these research philosophies and their research could benefit if they take advantage of all of these three methods. So let's begin. Now the basic difference between the research philosophies consists of two ways of looking at the world or at reality. Now you could say that the reality is actually always the same whatever be the observer or you could say that the reality keeps changing depending on the observer. So we can say that is reality a function of the observer or it's not a function of the observer that's the basic question. Now if we look at the first type of research philosophy this is known as positivism and in this case what happens is that you presume that the reality is the same whoever be the observer. So this is of course very clear in fields such as physics, chemistry, math and so on. For example if I am going to measure the time period of a pendulum it's going to be the same whether it's measured by somebody in a certain country, in a different country, the race of the person changes, the gender changes, none of these is going to impact the time period of the pendulum. Similarly, if we look at the orbits of the planets, they are all going to be governed by Kepler's laws. These laws are universal, they are going to apply whether it is somebody in Japan who is doing the calculation or it is somebody in Mozambique. So it's not going to matter. So again, this is a basic thing in the hard sciences which essentially uses positivism all the time without necessarily talking about it. So here what happens is that the reality is very clear, it is hard, it is concrete and there are clear answers to problem. Now in this case what happens is that most of the research takes place through measurement and analysis. There is a lot of numerical data present, there is quantitative analysis, there are experiments and math model. Very often we try to get a functional relationship between two variables. So essentially we want to get some functional relationship y equals fx and x are all the variables concerned and y is certain output. So again you can do this using experiments, you can do this using mathematical modeling, you can do this using computation. So some of the things which are there in positivism is that the world as present is objective the results you obtain are replicable and again the type of people who are doing the research whether they are in different countries, they belong to different races, they belong to different genders is not going to have any impact on the outcome of this research. Now the number two way of looking at research philosophy or the second method is known as interpretivism. Very difficult word to pronounce, I am going to write it up in the screen somewhere. Now here what happens is that the thinking is that reality is actually subjective and depends on the experience of the observer. Now you can think of many situations for example in the social sciences where this is going to be certainly true. Let us take the situation where a person is trying to travel to different countries. Now the experience which this person has is going to depend on various factors. It's going to depend on his race, his gender, whether it's a single person, whether he's going with the family, whether it's a family with children and so on. So different people are going to have a different kind of experience in different countries depending on various factors like the ones I mentioned here. So what happens in this kind of research is that you have to use qualitative methods and a lot of research here is done by observation in the form of surveys, in the form of interviews and so on. So in these cases what happens is that we cannot rule out the 
feelings or emotion of any person concerned. Every person has a different reality which is constructed based on who they are and their experiences are completely different. So again, wherever you are looking at any variable which is fuzzy, you are going to encounter problems in this kind of method or in this kind of approach. Now, one of the things which happens is that in many cases, people use a third research philosophy and this is known as pragmatism. And here what happens is that the two methods I mentioned before, they are essentially combined. So you use a combination of qualitative and quantitative methods and essentially you try to be practical and flexible. You try to be both hard and soft. These are sometimes known as the mixed method type of research. So we can think of again the same problem I mentioned before about traveling to different countries. So what may happen is that you may get some of the information by doing surveys of different people and the experience they had in different countries. You can look at various parameters such as the gender of the person, the age of the person, the race of the person and so on. And also you can look at some quantitative data. For example, you can look at the different crime statistics present in the country. You can look at the situation of crime with respect to men, with respect to women, with respect to different races and so on. And you can combine these type of data to actually create this kind of mixed method research or the pragmatic research model. Now, what about using this kind of model which we discussed about subjectivity in the art sciences? Now, there are certain situations where I have used them in the past. For example, if you are somebody using methods such as based on fuzzy logic or Bayesian belief network, you actually do interviews of experts. For example, if you are trying to figure out certain systems which do conditioning, monitoring of factories and so on, you can talk to a lot of experts and ask them as to what are the different things they think is responsible for the different damages and faults in any system. And by the process of interviews, you can actually create fuzzy rules, you can create expert systems, you can even create Bayesian belief networks which will actually predict if a fault in a system is happening due to certain input variables. So people may tell you that when there is a certain type of noise, when there is a certain re um, increase in temperature, when there is a certain increase in pressure, then there is a certain problem. So again, you can even use qualitative methods in some of the hard science type of research and this is becoming increasingly show because even if you think about fields such as AI and machine learning, it's kind of a mixed method type of research because the way the AI comes up with the various solutions is hard to understand. Some of it is actually kind of qualitative information which it is using from various language models, various informations which are out there in the internet system. So this was my take on the three types of research philosophy. Now, most of us who are in the hard sciences, they tend to use the positivism without necessarily knowing that this is what they are doing and this is of course fine. Now, if you are in the social sciences, you may be using the interpretivism philosophy and also you may be sometime using the pragmatic philosophy or the mixed methods philosophy. But if you are in the hard sciences also, you can use some of these other philosophies in many situations and if you are in the soft sciences you could of course resort to various models and more mathematics and quantitative methods to boost your research. So certainly a cross fertilization between these type of methods is going to help you get better research problem and do better research. The, this was my video for today on research philosophies. I will see you in a video sometime soon. See you then.